Tommy, we might go back in time to North Kerry, 70 years ago when you were born. Were you born into a racing family? We were farmers. The father farmed and the milk cows and everything. We always had a horse or two. He used to breed a few half-breds. And we had a, a pony that used to take the milk to the creamery. Where I'd take him sometimes and I'd milk the cows as well. And I was to get, I was to ride this pony in the afternoons around down the fields and up around trying to get him fit to, because there was a pony race every year in Tarbert and around the sports field okay. and I used to train him for that and I got him fit for that. I'd lead him with no horse box or anything at the time so from my van to Tarbert was about five mile and I'd lead him all the way to Tarbert, lead him, lead him myself and he'd won the race three years there, twice I think twice yeah and I'd, I'd ride him back home again so that was him right and this is the famous piebald pony they, that it was a piebald pony yeah, yeah. Um, it was a, a tarbot at the time it was that carnival for three days and it was a big event then and you know i mean racing i mean there's racing in kerry and kerry has had uh, three racetracks at the time but racing as i say was that were you dreaming in years to come yeah this because be i used to play football with the minors under 14s and then I played with under 14s and then I played the minors with my van because at that time every evening I'd go up to the sports field as well and kick the football because we would three people at the time that were coming and going they were Jim Brosnan were playing for Kerry and Michal Brosnan and then a few years later Colin Callan or Bernard Callan and Colin his brother used to play for Kerry we'd Kerry players nice. but trying to get the ball then at the sport, you'd be 50 or 60 people up there right. at that time. It doesn't happen now. Tommy, you came from a, a rugby stronghold, in fact, in Kerry, and that was one of your first loves, playing rugby. When I finished the national school, I went to Mungry, which is now closed in Limerick, and, and I played rugby in, Mung in, in there. We, the first year I was under the junior team, we got beaten in the Munster Junior Cup. I was never a sick in my life the year we got beat. And then the following year, we went to the semi-final of the Senior Cup. But luckily enough, I was picked to play on the Munster schoolboys. And we went up to play uh, Ulster in Raven Hill in 63, when the times wouldn't be too good. But it was nice. a great, it was a, uh, I was very <laughs> pleased to have got th that, uh, that, that recognition that I was playing for Munster. Because I followed the team ever since, you know. Yeah. And so, I mean, sport was a very important part of your life and competing. Yeah, because it. when I, I went to, when I finished school, I wanted to get into the equitation school in, in the army right. to do a show jumping. And I, I went in and did my tests and everything for it. And I got the results about in September. They said I didn't get it. Right. So a friend of mine got me a job in the Phoenix Insurance in Dublin. Right. And I worked there for a year and a half. I used to play rugby for Lansdowne on the Saturday. And I'd come down and play for Abbey Field on the Sunday. Right. We had a very good team in Abbey Field then. I used to bring a few lads down from Dublin. Right. <laughs> I see. And were they carry men? <laughs> I, I don't think they were. Could be from anywhere. I but, see. but we won the Munster Junior Cup that year. And we had a great team because we had... Doc Mahoney was in charge. He was the doctor now. We feel he was in charge of the team. And his two sons used to play. But Billy got a trial for Ireland at the wing forward that year. Okay. And Fergus Slattery got on before him. That'll tell you the team we had. If it's somebody good enough to get a trial for Ireland. We had a good team. That was amazing. But So you're working away at insurance in Dublin. But you're still dreaming about racing. I was because during, when they came to summer... I was at school with Barry Brogan and I used to go out to their place and ride out in the summer. And I'd ride, you know, ride a few horses and come back in and that's where they really got taken to. And at that stage then, I rode to about 10 trainers in England looking for a job as an amateur. The only body to write back was Neville Crump to say that he didn't need, he had plenty staff. Right. So a friend of mine, you Bobby Renton in, in Yorkshire used to sell him some cattle. And I went o I, I I arranged to meet him. I was in insurance company in Dublin, working there in, in Kildare Street. And 
I arranged to meet him at me in the Hibernian Hotel in Dublin. Right. And I, Mrs. Broughton was with him, his big owner. So they said I could go over. So about a month later, I gave up my job and went to, to Yorkshire. And his butler picked me up in Leeds Airport. I didn't know a sinner. And he put me in digs with this old farm couple that were just beside the yard. They had a, a house cow and they asked me could I milk, I said I could. So my job there was to milk the cow every morning and evening as well by hand. Oh my but I was, to, I was with Bobby for about three months and he got my license right. as an amateur. Okay. And he gave me a few rides and then after about the third ride, he, he, I had a winner at Weatherby on a horse called New Money. That was my first winner. What do you remember about that day? <laughs> I think I beat Jack Barry was second. Really? <laughs> second or third. Because word. Jack slags me still to this day about it. <laughs> and that just, I presume, fueled the fire for more success, that you were, you were hooked then, were you? Yeah, so the, uh, then I, I rode for an amateur for two years, and uh, they made me turn professional. And then I went on, I was rolling for Bobby for three or four years, and Wrote good winners for like he got in contact with other trainers and got riding for them etc. You know. And you were twice champion jockey in England, and you rode against some of the best riders of that time. Other champion jockeys around that time were people like John Frankham, John Joe O'Neill, Ron Barry. How do you rate those guys against, say, the jockeys of today? Well, the jo the standard of jockeys is is never been. It's always good at, at every stage, but then there was no agents. Mm. So a young fella then got a better chance of going, climbing the ladder, because he'd get support from his stable, and, he'd supply, and he wouldn't get agents looking for outside rides. So, you know, as I say, practice makes perfect. You know, if you get plenty of practice, you get better and better. So that's the improvement in, in the stages. And which of the jockeys riding against you at that time, who were the guys that you admired, who you thought were the best of that generation, apart from yourself? I remember years ago when I was at home with the pony jumping ditches, I said I was to try to style myself on two, going over a fence, Pat Taff and, Bo and uh, Bobby Beasley and the finish. That was the two that I used to try to, 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 to try to, to mold myself on. That's years ago. <laughs>